involved in a most unusual situation for Ferdy. The man cannot talk. That does not happen very frequently. So Bobby, good enough to join us here at ringside. And uh, we had an opportunity earlier to talk with heavyweights Pinklon Thomas and Alfonso Ratliff. You're on a red-hot roll. You have not lost a fight since you beat Elijah Tillery in March on NBC Sports World. You're facing an undefeated Pinklon Thomas. Both of you headed toward a heavyweight championship fight. You realize how important this fight is to you? Yes, uh, I think it's a very important fight. I'm, I'm going out to win it. And um, I think Pinklon Thomas is a real good fighter, but uh, I see a way that I can beat him. You see a way you can beat Pinklon Thomas, but his punch is much stronger than yours by about twice. He knocks out people flat. Well, you can say that because you haven't been hit by my punch. <laughs> you know, and he haven't either. I, I got a pretty strong punch, too. And um, he just, you know, I weigh me probably a couple of pounds. I, I don't think he's as hard as it is I am. Quick prediction. Uh, knockout. Pink line Alfonso Ratliff says you're making a mistake that you're looking past him. What is your reaction to that? <laughs> well, I've trained about four good weeks for the fight. Last week I went to camp. Um, I thought about nothing but Alfonso Ratliff. Um, fighting uh, Coach here in my last fight was uh, uh, a proven fact that I'm a legitimate contender. I don't look past nobody who I'm fighting. I'm aiming at Ratliff. I slept about, I think about, I thought about him last night. I dreamed about him last night. And, um, um, you know, uh, I'm not looking past him. He's he's uh, right on my mind right now, and uh, uh, he can think what he wants, but um, we'll see what's happening tonight. The one factor that Ratliff has going for him, he has that enormous reach and has a reach advantage on you. How do you nullify that? With my jab. His uh, reach don't mean nothing. I got good reflexes. I got good timing. I'll be slipping his jab, whatever he throw. I'll be getting by it. I'll be counting. I'm going to tear his body. I'm going to try to break his ribs. I don't mean to sound real destructive. I mean, yeah. the sport is an art to me, and uh, I love the sport. And I ain't going out to do uh, to try to uh, to decease the guy, but, like, um, the name of the game is to win, and um, I plan on winning, and uh, this jab don't mean nothing to me. His reach don't mean nothing to me. 25-year-old Pinklon Thomas, originally from Pontiac, Michigan, lived in Des Moines, Washington for 10 years, now fights out of Philadelphia. There he is, a converted southpaw, record of 20-0, one draw, 17 by knockout. The draw in his last bout against Hedy Coetzee is ranked fifth by Ring Magazine. Even the WBA and the WBC seem to agree on his skills. WBA ranking him sixth, WBC number seven. And he's going up against 27-year-old Alfonso Ratliff out of Chicago. Record of 16 and 1, 11 by knockout. Let's go to the ring. Ladies and gentlemen, this next bout is scheduled for 10 rounds, and it's in the heavyweight division. The judges, William Kostrob, Harold Letterman, and Tommy Kazmarek. The timekeeper to Bell is Roy Johnson, counting for the knockdown seconds alternate referee, Tony Perez. In the ring at this time, the man in charge of the scheduled 10 round heavyweight bout, referee Frank Cappuccino. And now, boxing fans, introducing the principals. First, in the red corner, wearing the red trunks with the black trim, he weighed in at 195 and one quarter pounds. This gentleman is ranked number six and seven, respectively, by the World Boxing Association and World Boxing Council among cruiserweights from the windy city of Chicago in the state of Illinois. Ladies and gentlemen, here is Alfonso Ratliff. Ratliff. And his opponent in the blue corner, wearing the all pink trunks. He weighed in at 211 and one half pounds. This gentleman is ranked number six and seven respectively by both the World Boxing Association and the World Boxing Council, a native of Pontiac, Michigan. Ladies and gentlemen, he is now residing in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Here is Pinklin Thomas. Thomas. 
Alfonso Ratliff suffering one loss during his professional career. A fight telecast here on NBC. He was stopped by Tim Witherspoon in the seventh round. That back in December of 81. Larry Holmes set okay, to fight gentlemen. Witherspoon Good following afternoon. his bout tomorrow Number against one, Lucian Rodriguez. Good, clean, hard fight. Both you understand that? Any low blows, any thumbing, healing, butting, holding and hitting will cost you the round. And if I have to go further, I will do that also. When I say break, protect yourselves at all times, step back clean. In the event of a knockdown, the man standing, go to the furthest neutral corner, stay there until I call him back or I'll send you right on back. Both of you got it together? Both of you touch gloves now? Good luck to both of you. Look at that reach advantage. Alfonso Ratliff with eight inches in reach on Pinklon Thomas, but Thomas weighing in at 211 and a half, and Ratliff at uh, 195 and a quarter. I don't know, uh, Bobby Chez, uh, Ratliff says he's 6'5". He's listed at 6'4 and a half. Appears to be closer to 6'3", but his uh, program height is 6'5". Is that an intimidating factor that he's uh, attempting? Well, I'm, I'm sure that Pinklin's going to worry more about the reach than the height. Go to the body and uh, shrink him down a little bit anyhow. Pinklin Thomas's biggest victory stopped James Quick Tillis last August in round eight. And then in his last bout, uh, the draw against Teddy Coetzea. Pinklin Thomas, appropriately enough, in pink trunks. He began boxing at age 19, had only three amateur bouts, winning all three, so he has never lost a fight, at least those that can be documented in the ring. At age 11, Pinklon Thomas was a heroin addict, but his childhood sweetheart, Kathy, now his wife, helped turn Pinklon around. By 18, enlisted in the Army, got married, had a son, and at age 25, uh, he is in line for a potential heavyweight title fight. That's his goal. He says he wants a bout with Larry Holmes. And he'll be at ringside tomorrow in Scranton to watch Holmes and Rodriguez. I think both fighters here, as in the last fight, have something to prove, both going toward that title. Alfonso Ratliff said to have a good chin. Stand-up fighter, boxer, boxer. The rap is he does fall into periods of sluggishness. An opening action. Very good. Pinkle definitely the heavier puncher here. Ratliff's going to have to keep him off with his jab that he's not using effectively. Pinklon Thomas has that lightning left jab, and we are seeing it, although that time swatting in the face of uh, Ratliff. Pinklon uses jab quite well for a short reach that he has as a heavyweight. Thomas has very fast hands. And he's getting in with that left hand. <laughs> he's actually out jabbing Ratliff. Pinklin usually a slow starter coming right out here throwing bombs. Less than a minute left in this first round, scheduled for 10. Former heavyweight Ernie Terrell at ringside screaming at uh, Ratliff, stay off the ropes and jab. He cannot get away from Pinklon Thomas. Ratliff is in trouble in this first round. Tremendous cut opened over his right eye. Vicious cut. And the blood flowing from the right eye of Alfonso Ratliff. Final seconds, round one. An impressive opening round for Pinklon Thomas. The folds, you'll see that Fast left jab, the quick hands of Pinklon Thomas, putting Alfonso Ratliff in immediate trouble in the round one, and Percy Richardson working on the cut in the corner of Alfonso Ratliff, who now is looking to stay away. Well, Ratliff definitely has to punch back here because Pinklon just coming to him and doing what he wants the way fights are today. They'll stop it. Ratliff's most impressive victory is a decision over Leroy Boone and a decision over Elijah Tillery. 
is bout with Witherspoon, his only loss, uh, step up in quality for Ratliff. Today, certainly another major step against Pink Lom Thomas. Absolutely. Now Ratliff looking to flick the jab. Ratliff is still very tentative and very aware of the power that Pinkland Thomas carries in both hands. Thomas keeps that left hand down very low. He came out snapping it in the first round, and now he is stalking Ratliff. I would think that after the big first round, Pinkland might come out a little faster to see how much it took out of Ratliff, but he's taking his time and just working forward. Marv Albert with middleweight contender Bobby Chez at ringside, subbing for the fight Dr. Ferdy Pacheco, who is alongside but without voice due to laryngitis. Pinklon Thomas having his way against Alfonso Ratliff. This is round two. Heavyweight match scheduled for 10 earlier. It was Alex Ramos in a unanimous decision over Mark Frazee here in Atlantic City. Again, the cut starting to bleed on Ratliff. Excellent cut man in the corner of Percy Richardson. If anybody can close it, he can. Alfonso Ratliff's last three fights have been as a cruiserweight. He is ranked as a cruiserweight, not ranked as a heavyweight. And Pinklon Thomas with a tremendous weight advantage. Again, is uh, drawn blood from Ratliff. I think Ratliff's in, in real trouble here. And if uh, he doesn't start defending himself, we could see that eight count. Oh, left hand to the neck of Ratliff. Final seconds, round two. Round three upcoming. Bobby Chess, you get the feeling that Pinklon Thomas could take Alfonso Ratliff anytime he wants. He has had periods of laziness, and it seemed to be a coasting second round after the impressive opening round. Absolutely. I think Pinklin right now is uh, definitely in the driver's seat, and when he wants to turn it on, he can put Ratliff out. Pinklon Thomas had Alfonso Ratliff in trouble in round one, opening a cut on Ratliff. Thomas having no problem with that massive reach advantage of Ratliff. Oh. He's overcoming the reach with his strength. Ratliff just keeps backing up, backing up, giving way to uh, Pinklin. Pinklon Thomas is looking for a title shot against Larry Holmes. Says he does not like Holmes because Holmes criticized him for fighting a South African, Hedy Kotsia. <laughs> And we're halfway through. It's third round. Bigley keeps winning, keeps fighting and winning as the way he's been. He may get a chance to uh, settle that score with Larry Holmes. Although he may not want to. Ratliff is showing some signs of life here, getting a jab in the chin now and then. A couple of combinations, but Pinklin's just having his way. And again, we see signs of that left hand of uh, Pinklon Thomas. That set it all up in the first round, that he coasted in round two. I believe Ratliff ha has another cut above his left eye now, a very small one, but his other eye is opening up. Alfonso Ratliff on 
pressing on Pinkman. Thomas is showing some confidence. Definitely stunned Thomas there. We'll be back with round four after these words. Well, Alfonso Ratliff appeared to be out of this one, but here he comes last round with an effective combination that stunned Thomas. So this is round four. Pinklund Thomas, yes, in the pink. Alfonso Ratliff in the red. And now Ratliff is standing there, which could be a mistake. Well, he showed some definite signs of life, and this could change things around for Ratliff. Alfonso Ratliff, 27 years old, out of Chicago. Record of 16 and 1, 11 by knockout. The one loss stopped by Tim Witherspoon back in December of 81. Well, he has certainly caught the attention of Pink Lock Thomas. Absolutely. I thought it was too little too late for the last round. If he could fight around like that, he could start winning this fight. Pink Lock Thomas, undefeated. 20 victories, one draw, 17 by knockout. Ranked fifth by Ring Magazine. And in the top 10 of both the WBA and the WBC. Big victory over James Quick Tillis last August. Stopped him in round eight. And he comes off the draw with Hedy Cotzea. Blood's starting to run down after Ratliff's face, but I believe he's going around the eye instead of in it. Left hook by Ratliff. Pinklon Thomas continues to use the left jab, and he has that right hand caught. Pinklon slightly more tentative now after that burst from Ratliff, and uh, both fighting a little more cautiously. Has the left in on Ratliff. Less than a minute left. Round four, scheduled for ten. Tough body blow thrown by Ratliff. We're live from Atlantic City, New Jersey. Sands Hotel and Casino. And here's Ratliff again, backing Thomas up. Ratliff's starting to put together a few combinations now and take a little bit of charge. Pinklin taking his time seems to be content with just pushing Rattlers back, keep him off balance. And Pinklin Thomas flashing his head at uh, Alfonso Ratliff. This is round five of the corner of Alfonso Ratliff. Uh, Ratliff complaining to the referee, Frank Cappuccino, that he was thumbed in the eye by Pinklon Thomas. They're also checking out that uh, cut very carefully. The Fight Doctor scorecard has it as a shutout. All Pinklon Thomas over the first four. Scoring in the state of New Jersey on the round system. The round is even. They go to the supplementary five point. Break the tie and the scoring now handled by the three judges. Referee does not have a say. One of the raps against Pinklin is that toward the end of the fight, fifth, sixth, seventh rounds, etc., he slows up and tends to relax. With a little bit of charge that Ratliff has must have, we'll see if this affects Pinklin at all. Good combination by Thomas. Well, Pinklon Thomas came out very strong in the first round, relaxed in the second. Ratliff is showing flashes in rounds three and four. And Thomas getting back to business here in round five. Pinklin has great reflexes in just getting that jab and keeping it in Ratliff's face. A leaping right hand thrown by Ratliff. Here, Ratliff's going forward. He hurt Thomas 
with the right hand. And a left hand by Ratliff. Ratliff with a great combination. The crowd responding to the underdog, Alfonso Ratliff. He's a man giving an inch of ground, just standing there and throwing him. And now Pinklin Thomas having something to say to Alfonso Ratliff. Pinklin also has now a minor cut under his right eye, I believe. Yes, there is a scrape under the right eye of Thomas. Good action round. Thomas continues to get the left jab in, and he's doing a lot of damage to the face of Ratliff. Good left again, and the, again. I think the power of Thomas is going to be too much here. Ratliff's making somewhat of a mistake by trading with him. So that's the end. Back in Atlantic City, New Jersey, Marv Albert along with Bobby Chez subbing for the fight doctor, Ferdy Pacheco, under the weather. Terrific action, fifth round, Alfonso Ratliff landing. And Picklon Thomas also to, able to come back. Good combinations thrown by both. And the fight doctor uh, has given Ratliff for round five, so on the scorecard. Franklin Thomas in front, uh, five rounds to one. It appeared that, uh, like a four to one. It appeared that uh, Thomas was on the way to uh, putting Ratliff away in round one, but uh, Ratliff able to rally. At the end of the fourth round, he showed some signs of life. Back in that fifth round, he made it a war. It'll be interesting to see who takes charge here and makes the first move at a real aggressive attack. Alfonso Rutgers again landing on Pinklon Thomas. Rather than digging down and going for it right here and Keeping Pinklin off him with some tremendous shots. <laughs> oh, that left jab continues to sting Rattler. I just don't think Rattler has enough power to keep Thomas off him. Well, the weight differential, Thomas of 211 and a half. Ratliff weighed in at 195 and a quarter. And Ratliff's last three fights have been at a lighter weight as a cruiserweight. That extra 16 pounds is making a definite difference right here. <laughs> and he's going up against a guy who has a heavy punch. But it looks like uh, Picklon Thomas has lost his steam, not very much left in the punching car. Well, they say that he tends to peter out a little toward the end. We'll find out in the next few rounds. <laughs> right hand by Thomas that grazed Ratliff. His most effective weapon continues to be the left jab. And Ratliff's punching has been more effective the last two rounds. I think he's really come on this round and he's taking this round right now. Keep him picking off balance, making him very tentative. Thomas not able to connect with that right hand as he looks to set it up with the jab. There you go, there you go. That'll do it for round six. There you go. 
in the corner of Alfonso Ratliff. They work above the right eye. It's like a severe cut now above the eye. You see the fight doctor scorecard has it 4 1 1 in favor of Thomas, and Bobby Chez has it 4 and 2. Well, if Pinklon Thomas has hopes for a title shot, he must get by people like Alfonso Ratliff. And again, Ratliff complaining about a thumb. He complained earlier. And again, the complaint. Referee Frank Capitino checking it out. Stay back in the corner. Let me see. Is he all right? Huh? Is he all right? Get in there, man. Who am I? Who am I? Said the referee, all right. Frank Cappuccino. Did not ask him to spell his name. Ah, oh, there it is. As Ratliff complains that he got a thumb, complaining for the third time in the bout that he's that he was thumb. I want to knock it off, and that's going to be it. It's fights like this which will promote those thumbless gloves. And now the uh, clock resumes. Unofficially, uh, we had about 50 seconds gone by in the seventh round. That's a severe cut, though, that uh, Ratliff has suffered. And, of course, if he gets a thumb on the cut, makes things even worse. Ratliff's back to moving again. He's not standing with Pinklin anymore. Alfonso Ratliff also looking to clear his vision. A little uh, dancing round for Alfonso Ratliff trying to stay away from Pinklon Thomas. Thomas continues to stick the jab in the face of Ratliff and warned by the referee. Watch the thumbing. Alfonso seems to be most effective when he's going right at Pinkton Thomas, but he's also having a hard time dealing with that strength. Overhand right that did not connect thrown by Thomas. That'll make things interesting. All right, Pinklon Thomas has uh, just lost a round. Lou Duva in the corner of Thomas arguing with the referee Frank Cappuccino. Cappuccino taking a round from Thomas because of thumbing. He was warned on several occasions. And then Cappuccino leaning over to say, all right, you lost, uh, lost the round. I think Radliff may have been Faking, Bobby, here are some instructions from uh, Cappuccino. Well, Perhaps to buy some time because uh, he is bothered by that cut. He probably was accidentally thumbed and took the opportunity to get a rest uh, because he's been getting a little tired due to his pick of overwhelming strength. And Ratliff opens up strong. effective coming forward, taking it right to Pinklin Thomas. <laughs> Tremendous jab on Thomas, just keeping Ratliff at bay always. And this fight has taken a twist. Pinklin Thomas appears to have his way. Ratliff has been coming on, and with Thomas losing a round because of the thumbing, Ratliff finds himself pulling closer and closer. <laughs> Mike Doctor scorecard has a 4-2 and 1 for Thomas. And Bobby Chesnow, oh, again! Yeah. He was thumped, but the referee Cappuccino doesn't buy it. He says no. Ratliff giving the uh, indication that he can't see. 
this, must, this might be another one of those fights which end with a lot of controversy. What do you think? think he's uh, I'll tell you, I missed the exact punch, but uh, he looks clear-eyed to me from here. He's both open and not blurry. He's not blinking. I think he could be just looking for a rest. Have you ever done that? Never. <laughs> really? Again, it may be that he did take uh, the thumb of the eye, but the referee, uh, Frank Cappuccino, apparently with a credibility gap, did not buy it. We have not had any knockdowns. Thomas had Ratliff in trouble in round one. Ratliff able to rally, came back strong in rounds four and five. But again, Thomas has taken command. Thomas has reopened the fight over Ratliff's eye and is now applying the pressure full steam ahead. I believe that if Pinkman wants it, it can't be over right here, but he's just laying back and taking his time. All right, uh, some repairs to the glove of Ratliff as the round comes to City, New Jersey. On to round nine. And here is the incident in round eight where referee Frank Cappuccino did not buy the complaint of Alfonso Ratliff, who claimed he was thumped. Cappuccino apparently felt that uh, Ratliff was trying to clear his vision again. That's a severe cut of the right eye of Ratliff. Although earlier, Cappuccino did take a round from Thomas because of a thumbing incident. Right now, Pinkman's strength is definitely overtaking uh, Ratliff. And I think it's just going to be a matter of holding on. Earlier today, here at the Sands Hotel and Casino was Alex Ramos on the comeback trail, winning by unanimous decision over Mark Frazee. More boxing tomorrow starting at 2.30 Eastern time on ringside with James Hard Rock Green and Michael Dewar. Couple of guys who can throw thunder. And then... Larry Holmes defends his title against Lucian Rodriguez, starting at 4 o'clock from Scranton, Pennsylvania. Ratliff's legs are very weary under him right now, and if Pinkman presses him, I think this could be the end of the fight. Midway through, round nine. And less than a minute left in this ninth round, scheduled for 10. Pink Lock Thomas, 25 years old, record of 20 and old, comes off a draw in his last bout against Eddie Coltsia, won 17 by knockout. Earlier, it appeared that he was on his way to a knockout number 18. He had Alfonso Ratliff in trouble back in the first round. Ratliff, a record of 16-1. and one. His only loss stopped by Tim Weatherspoon in the seventh round back in December of 81. I think both fighters here are taking a little rest, getting ready for that final 10th round. And uh, definitely signs of weirdness shown on both fighters. We'll be back with that tenth and final round after these words. Hey, you got me, Kelly? Okay. Okay, baby, you're doing beautiful. Now, come on, last round. Though. Just hold up. Bobby Chase. Okay, All right, come on. Don't have you received similar advice? Someone in your corner says, just go out and win the fight. Yeah, basically all the time. That's what they tell me. <laughs> well, he's well ahead here, and uh, they don't want him to get careless. Because after all, you know, it's another man in front. He could get lucky. All right, tenth and final round. Alfonso Ratliff reluctant to touch gloves with Pinklon Thomas. I tend to think he's not in the best of moods. No. 
Earlier, Thomas, who was talking to Ratliff again, lost a round, round taken because he continually thumped at Ratliff. Thomas ahead on our scorecards. It would appear that Ratliff would need a knockout. Thomas continues to get that uh, left jab in. Pinklon Thomas ranked fifth by Ring Magazine. WBA ranks him sixth, the WBC seventh. He is one of three undefeated heavyweights in the top ten. Biggest victory stopping James Quick Tillis last August in round eight. Alfonso Ratliff is ranked, but as a cruiserweight, his last three fights have been in that weight classification. Going up against uh, the stronger and heavier, Pink Bob Thomas. I think that Ratliff might be better off in that cruiser division because he's got nice height, reach, and he's at the top of the limit there at 195. He can come down five pounds, whereas Pinklin's just too big, too heavy-handed for him. <laughs> Scoring here on the round system. If the round is even, they go to a five-point supplementary score to break the tie. And the scoring handled by the three judges, the referee does not have a vote. No knockdowns, although Thomas had Ratliff on the verge in the first round. Less than a minute left in the bout. Come on, Retro Sunday! Oh, right oh. hand, and Ratliff is hurt! The question is, can Ratliff survive the bout? right hand time perfectly Pinklon Thomas stopping Alfonso Radliff and the final stage of round 10 so Pinklon Thomas who had that right hand cut was able to land and Radliff Chased by Thomas, referee Cappuccino steps in, and that was it. Pinklon Thomas now 21 and 0, with 18 by knockout Alfonso Ratliff, who was able to rally and hold on, suffers his second defeat. Area. Ladies and gentlemen, referee Frank Cappuccino stops this bout at two minutes and 36 seconds of the 10th round, and a winner by a TKO, and still undefeated, Pinklin Thomas. <laughs> Thomas. So, 236 of round 10, Pinklin Thomas able to stop Alfonso Ratliff. And Thomas now, 21-0, one draw, 18 by Nakia. Back to talk with Pinklon in a moment. Right now, let's go. Back in Atlantic City, Marv Albert along with uh, the victorious Pinklon Thomas and the man in his corner to our far left, uh, Lou Duva. Pinklon, you opened strong in the first round. Appear that you had Alfonso Ratliff and then seemed to coast in round two. Well, what I wanted to do is take my time. I ain't want to get in no hurry. When you get in a hurry, you make mistakes. So I just wanted to pace myself. I knew I had 10 rounds to go, and I wanted to establish my jab. And uh, as the rounds went on, I felt myself getting looser where I could really, you know, get my jab off. I see my right hand, he was ducking it. So uh, a couple of times I tried to bring it under, but more than anything, me and Georgia worked with the jab. And uh, that's what I was trying to uh, establish because, uh, you know, everyone claims that Holmes got the best jab in the business, and uh, I wanted to show that I had a, I have a hell of a jab too, and mine is more powerful and devastating than his. And uh, 
I done fought two top ten contenders. I fought James Sillis, who's ranked number three. I fought Gary Coltier, who was ranked number one. He's the number one contender. Now I went back and fought a cruiserweight who was ranked uh, in the cruiserweight division. Who else is it for me to fight? I want the champ. I want Larry Holmes. I want to hope you hear me, Larry Holmes. I'm not trying to instigate, be no pass, uh, 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 you ready? Image. <laughs> I want <laughs> you, Larry Holmes. I want you. And I'll be at your fight tomorrow. And you won't miss me because I have one a great suit. <laughs> it won't be pink, in other words. No, it won't be pink. <laughs> what, what is your reaction to the, uh, the thumbing incident? You lost a round because of it. Did you think Rattler was trying to buy time, but perhaps uh, it was not as severe as it appeared? I don't know what Red Left was doing, really. Uh, if it was happening to me, I don't know what would have happened in, that, in the predicament if it was happening to me. I'm not really worried about it. I trained to go 10 rounds to fight Red Left and get him out of there, and that's what I wanted to do. And uh, whatever happened, I, I leave that up to the referee and the judges. I'm not the judge. I'm just the fighter. Well, what do you feel about the thumbing? Well, I don't really feel his, his hand was open. If you look, if, if they look at the picture, you saw Radcliffe, his, his right hand was wide open at all times. And he was throwing his right hand that way there. He's picking up both punches. I just think they were punching out there. I think there was a lot of complaints from Radcliffe's corner that may have been sided over there. Outside of that, I didn't see uh, Pinky do anything wrong at all. All right, 236 of round 10. Pinklon Thomas taking out Alfonso Ratliff here in Atlantic City, New Jersey. I'd like to thank... Uh, the fight 